Hey guys, welcome back to another episode of Miss Flips. In today's episode, we are working on this gorgeous sideboard or buffet or credenza or cabinet. It, it has so many names, but um, we're just gonna call it a sideboard. It's got some bruises, but you know, hopefully we're gonna give it some love and make it look good as new. But before we get started, make sure to like, subscribe, and do all those things so that we can stay a happy flippin' family, because it helps me keep making these videos for you guys. But anyways, let's get flippin'. So, like any other project, we're gonna start with cleaning, and the first step in cleaning is to remove all of the hardware. But these guys on the doors were very interestingly fastened in. They had just like a bolt threaded onto a screw with no head, so it was literally just the thread part, which I found very interesting. But with a nifty combination of pliers and spinning, I was able to get all of the hardware pieces off. For cleaning the piece, I am actually using QCS Surface Cleanser, which I have never used before, but you can find the instructions through the little QR code that are on each bottle. But when prepping a surface for either painting or sanding or anything like that, if you're just looking to clean, I'm using this empty bottle here and I'm mixing it with water and I'm doing a 50-50 solution. And this is just to clean the piece, it's just to make sure that each surface is degreased and so the paint or stain or whatever I use will adhere properly. And also when I go in to sand this surface, I won't be embedding any of that grease into the wood itself. After cleaning this baby and making sure to give plenty of dry time, I went into sand, but the finish on this was just so thick, and I tried scraping as well, and it just wasn't doing the job, so I ended up going in with my QCS stripper, which I didn't have a lot of, but honestly, it stretched a long way. I was able to do this entire piece with what I had left, which was pretty cool. And these are the results after about like 45 minutes. Absolutely crazy. For these curved and more detailed areas, I went in with a bristle brush and made sure to scrape all of the little crevices. In order to conserve stripper, I went in with a paper towel and water and wiped the residue away. And look at this delicious wood. Let me know in the comments what type of wood you think this is. I have my own theories, but I am so curious to hear what you guys think. And just look at this before and after. I haven't done any sanding yet, and this is the difference that QCS Stripper makes. Absolutely insane. And if you were worried about working with vertical surfaces, it works perfectly fine on those as well. And I think that one of the best parts is that you don't have to cover it with plastic wrap or plastic bags or anything in order for it to do what it does best. Once everything was finally all stripped away, it was time to get to sanding, and I started with a 120 grit and then moved up to a 180 grit and then finished on a 220. When it comes to sanding, I think the most important things to remember is take your time, change your sandpaper regularly, and make sure that you're progressing through the proper grits. 
But all of this takes time to learn, and believe me, experience is the best teacher when it comes to sanding. So be patient with yourself, it definitely is a learning curve, and just remember that even the professionals make mistakes. When I was sanding the inside of this door, I uncovered a manufacturer's mistake that they just covered up with a little bit of toner and stain. But it gives you perspective, and lets you have a little bit more grace when it comes to your own imperfections and mistakes and learning curves and all that good stuff. So love yourself. Be patient. Be kind to yourself. So between the second grit and the last grit, I like to go in and make any of the repairs that I need to make. For this piece, it wasn't anything major. All it had was just a couple of cracks in the veneer. So I just went in there with wood filler and filled it all up before going in with my last sanding of 220 grit. And while we let all these repairs dry, I'm going to tell you a quick story of when I picked up this piece. The owner of the piece, whose family owned this piece for multiple generations, did not know that this was a drawer because it was stuck shut. And once I finally got it out, I wasn't able to get it back in. So I went in with my sander and some 60 grit and sanded away a lot of the wood on the sides and the bottom just to give it a little space on either side. And it actually worked really well. And now all I need to do is put some wax oil on the sides and it will glide like butter. Now that we finally got this baby all glitzed up and smoothed out, it's time to remove the door so that I can get to staining properly. If you want a perfect stain job, I highly recommend doing this because getting stuff on the hinges is just never a good look. Unless you're doing it for a stylistic choice, of course. And as always, you want to go in with your vacuum or a cloth or both and just make sure all of the dust is gone before you start staining. So here's my problem with this piece. This is a different kind of wood than this. And both of these are a different kind of wood than this. And all three of these are a different kind of wood than this. And I have to match them all to uh, a different piece. Should be interesting. If you would like to see the piece that I matched, make sure to check out this video and add it to the queue so that you can see the look that we're going for. To get a better idea of the tones of wood that we're working with, I went in with the same hickory stain that I started with on the other piece and just stained all four different woods just to see what the undertones were and what I needed to do in order to get them to match. So we're working with a dark walnutty color and then more of like a red mahogany to a yellow maple. So we got a whole variety of things going on here and we have to make them all kind of have the same tone. So this is gonna be tricky. In order for them all to get the same base, I went in and covered the entire thing with hickory stain. And please be nice, this is my first time matching four different kinds of woods. I have no idea if I'm doing it properly or not, but we are going to find out. So we're doing some trial and error here. Starting off with a gel stain may have not been the best choice because it kind of sits on top of the wood instead of soaking it into it like a traditional stain. So that may have been where my mistake was. However, I stuck with it and I just kept going and it just made me apply a little bit more coats with the other products that I used. And here is just a little example of how contrasting these two colors are. To make sure that all these little grooves and crevices were covered, I went in with a paintbrush and just kind of painted the stain on and then wiped any excess away with a paper towel.
After it was completely dry, I went in with some mahogany and this stain was a little bit more brown than I expected it to be, but it honestly worked really well on top of the stain that I had already used. And I just made sure to let it sit a little bit longer than usually, particularly on the top of the piece. And it just enriched the color and enhanced and added so much depth to it. So I've never used toner, but I've heard so many people talk about it, so I thought I'd make my own. And so I put some wipe on poly in a container and then poured some stain in there and then mixed it all up. And this is basically what a toner is. And since I'm not quite comfortable with my skill level when it comes to toner and all that sort of stuff, I decided to go with things that I knew I had on hand and that were accessible to me. I ended up putting two coats of this on and I could have gone further in order to make them match a little bit more, but honestly I was really happy with the tone that I was getting and it showed the variation in between all of the different woods while still carrying the same undertones throughout. While my last coat was drying, I decided to do some things that I could do inside of my home because it was getting pretty cold out there. So I went after these hinges with a sponge and some good old barkeeper's friend. And just look at this before and after. Ugh, so fancy. While I was inside, I took the opportunity to line these shelves with some beautiful wallpaper that I got off Amazon, surprisingly. And I have to say, this was probably the best and easiest experience that I have ever had with wallpaper. Me and wallpaper don't typically get along, but we did very well with this project. If you'd like to try this wallpaper, make sure to check out the link in the description below. Sometimes it can't be helped. You get these weird little crease fold air bubble things in your paper and the easiest way that I've found to get them out is to lift the paper a little bit and then go in with your card scraper and flatten it out all the way and then you can continue carrying on as you normally would. But if you notice, the edge of wallpaper is not exactly fit for a shelf because it has that weird white line. So I opted to paint the edge and get rid of the white line by hiding it with the paint. And that way it just looks much more clean and polished and not unfinished as it did before.
To protect this wallpaper, I am using a new product called Decorator's Varnish, and it is a product brought to my attention by Chrissy Design on Instagram. Make sure to check her out. But this product is amazing. It's a water-based poly that comes in all different kinds of finishes from the UK, but they sell here in the US as well, and it's specifically for decorators. So if you're doing wallpaper, designs, paint, all that sort of stuff, this stuff is made to protect that. And a super big bonus, it dries within like an hour. It's literally amazing. But as we are coming to an end on part one of this amazing makeover, make sure to like and subscribe and do all those things so that you can stay tuned for part two where I am going to be adding this to the front of this piece. So make sure to like, subscribe, and do all those things. Turn on that notification bell so we can stay a happy flippin' family. And until next time, guys, stay flippin'.